Good morning. My name is Mike Silberg, and I thank you for joining us this morning. The title of this talk is November 5th, Darkness or Light, Day or Night. We're going to start with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you give us every day. And we thank you that you've given us a nation where we can choose our leaders and we ask your touch on this talk. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus said this. This is from John 9, 5 and John 12, 35. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Walk while you have the light so that darkness will not overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. You know, you've probably heard this before. This election is the most important one in our lifetime. So this is not the time to be sitting on the sidelines, right? Before we get into this, I'm going to say, I'm in no place to tell anyone how to live their lives, much less how to vote, okay? But I think it's important to, to discuss why we should vote on November 5th. I think it's dangerous for a country to have someone in power who is incapable to lead our nation, after the telltale debate on July 2nd, 2024, with, which showed us President Biden was incapable of running the country, we all knew the Democratic Party and the willing media had been lying to us. When they couldn't get away with it any longer, suddenly Joe Biden had to go because the world had found out what they had been hiding, that Joe couldn't handle himself in normal adult conversations, let alone handle himself as being the leader of our nation. Kamala Harris, who couldn't muster enough support to make it through the primaries, was originally put out to pasture by the Democratic Party. Now, according to this same party, she is the best thing since sliced bread. I don't think we can trust the Democratic Party in their selection of leaders. Do you? Don't we want someone to lead us who is a proven leader? The world is a dangerous place. Look at President Trump's accomplishments while he was president. He appointed judges to the Supreme Court who understood Roe v. Wade was a sham. And on June 24, 2022, they overturned it. Trump is the only president to personally attend the annual pro-life rally in Washington, D.C., the only one. He is the most pro-life president by far. He put more minorities to work, more blacks, more Hispanics, more women back to work than any other president in history. Employment was at an all-time high and unemployment at an all-time low during his presidency. He turned the U.S. from being an oil importer to being an oil exporter. He built a wall on the border between Mexico and the U.S. to restrict the flood of illegal immigrants criminal activity, drug gangs, and drug cartels from streaming into our country. On May 14, 2018, he moved the U.S. Embassy in Israel to its capital, Jerusalem, something which every president has promised to do for the last 30 years and hasn't done. Trump did. On August 13, 2020, Trump brokered a historic peace deal between the United Arab Emirates and Israel. On September 15, 2020, Trump brokered a historic peace deal, again, between Bahrain and Israel. 
This is everything we so-called evangelicals have been praying for and crying out to God for decades. Politicians from both sides of the political aisle have been promising to do these very things for 40 years and have not. Trump came in and accomplished them in four years. Trump delivers. He's not a politician. He's not beholding any benefit, benefactor or political operative. He's a businessman, and he knows how to get things done. But some say he's a racist. No, he's not. He put more black people to work than any BLM organization ever did. He supports law and order, does not tear down our law enforcement officers like the left does, like BLM does, like Antifa does. If you don't believe me, listen to Candace Owens or Thomas Sowell or Larry Elder or Dr. Ben Carson. Some say Trump hates women. No, he doesn't. He put more women back to work than any women's organization or welfare program ever had. And how many millions of baby girls owe their lives to him by being born and not being aborted? But he doesn't talk like a Christian. Have you ever heard of Isaiah the prophet? Do you like his prophecies? Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, Isaiah 9 verse 6. Do you know by his own admission, Isaiah said he had a dirty mouth? And he hung out with people who had dirty mouths. Isaiah 6, verse 5. Don't we want someone who will actually do what they promise? Aren't we tired of politicians saying one thing and doing another? Trump does what he says he's going to do. We know that's true because that's what he did when he was in office. And that scares the left to death because they don't tell the truth. And their policies are proven to be destructive, not productive. Trump's not perfect. There are issues I disagree with him on, but he's light years beyond any candidate from either side of the aisle that has run for the presidency in the last couple of decades. The world is a dangerous place, and we need someone who will stand up to the dictators and terrorist regimes waiting for a chance to spread violence throughout the world. To sit idly by like Biden and Harris and allow Russia to invade Ukraine and let terrorist groups infiltrate our campuses and promote the kind of rhetoric that spews out hatred and vitriol against Israel and the United States, that's criminal. Do you want to have more of what the radical left has given us? Unrestricted abortions on demand, minors having access to abortions without parental consent, partial birth and after birth abortions, same-sex marriage and an alphabet soup of sexual perversion being promoted as normal? Even the children? Gender transformations decided on a whim? Totally ignoring physical gender realities? A world with evil dictators and nations going unchallenged and in some cases even being supported by the left. Open borders, an increase in illegal immigration, homelessness, crime, drug addiction, and inflation, all siphoning money and resources away from the military, from veterans, and from hard-working American families struggling to make ends meet. You can't tell me these things aren't true. They are true. The political left is destroying our country. Listen to these following verses. Jesus said, while you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become sons of light. Even though Jesus had, this is what John says, this is from John uh, chapter 12, Verses from 36 through 43. Even though Jesus had performed so many miracles, they did not believe him. The many who believed in Jesus were not confessing him for fear that that would be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the approval of men rather than the approval of God. This was to fulfill the words of Isaiah the prophet. You know, the prophet with the dirty mouth. God has blinded the eyes of the unbelieving and hardened their hearts. Jesus is a light shining into the darkness. I pray we all listen to the truth while the light is shining. Jesus said we must do the works of him who sent me as long as it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. John 9, 4 through 5. The time to act is now while the light is shining. Today in America, we still have the power to vote. It's still day. 
tomorrow, we might not have that power. We need to vote November 5th before the day turns to night. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He gave you freedom. November 5th, coming up. Darkness or light? Day or night? Jesus said, while I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness will not overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. <laughs>